back at the Santa Monica Pier in beautiful Southern California for the Arnold Strongman USA competition. We are through two events getting set for event number three. It is the last man standing deadlift firefighter competition going on among some local firefighters from Santa Monica. Being joined right now by a man who has won the Arnold Strongman Classic three times. He is Brian Shaw. He has already qualified for the 2019 Arnold Classic. How are you feeling now as you get set for that event? Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling really good actually right now. I mean, it's uh, it's always kind of a fine line of, of making sure you're healthy, making sure the training's on point, and making sure that the end goal is peaking at the Arnold in, in uh, the, at the first week of March, really. With such a limited time now to get ready for that event, what do you focus on with your training? Well, I mean, basically I'll, I'll start to back off a little bit of the gym stuff and start to do more of the actual events. So that'll that'll take the priority uh, kind of here for the last six weeks. You finished second last year to Half Thor. He is here today. Yep. Obviously, he has a big target on his back for you. What are you going to have to do in order to beat him in Columbus? Well, he's he's going to. I mean, in all honesty, he's going to have some great events this year with with the events they've chosen, um, and he he'll be tough to beat. I mean, we're we're going to be in a battle again. It's going to be head to head. You know, so so it's not uh, the the key is really not dropping any points. And making sure that I come in um, ready to, ready to John, fight. Yeah. You didn't get the highest mark, but I gotta say, I want also, you uh, Brian, I know that you're competing against all the other strong men, but also at some start. level you're competing against history. Right Four-time TWI World Strongest Man, right. three-time Arnold yeah, Champion, too many world records and open competitions to to count. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, you're you're exactly right. It's it's legacy, and you know what what I have established over you know gosh more than a decade now of, of doing the Arnold and uh, and competing a world's strongest man and um, you know it's important it's important to leave that track record you know and to uh, to chalk up those wins I mean it's something where you know I don't I don't necessarily feel like I have anything left to prove but I still have goals right so I, I still want to accomplish things and and um, uh, my competitiveness has not left at all. I mean, I, I only lost the Arnold last year by a very small margin. It's a couple points here or there. If I would have last, lifted my last deadlift last year, I would have won the contest. It, it was that close. So it's it's kind of picking apart what can I do better, uh, how can I come in better this year, and, and um, that's what goes through my head in training and, and uh, in preparation. Well, not a lot of weaknesses in your performances, so it just comes down to what you can actually improve on, and then it turns into that continued competitive fire. Yeah, yeah that, that's it. If you have that competitive fire, for me, I'm constantly thinking about it, how I can get better, what I can do better. I mean, there was... Uh, like I said, a couple events, I was I was disappointed in my deadlift last year and disappointed really with the stone to shoulder event. I really lost a lot of points on that one. So, you know, it's, it's cleaning those things up, making sure that I'm ready uh, to perform. And it's, it's going to be fun. It really is going to be fun. Yeah. You mentioned the deadlift. That's the event that is up next year. It will be a little bit different of a format than we saw uh, in Columbus, Ohio. This is a last man standing format. They're going to start at 700 pounds and each competitor needs to lift every weight they will increase in alternating increments of 50 pounds and then 40 pounds so where you had a lot of strategy that came into play in columbus here it's all about you just got to go out and grip it and rip it yeah i mean they're they're uh, they're gonna call the weights they're gonna you know it's just a rising bar so you've just got to get the lift done and move on to the next round from a mental standpoint if you're an athlete competing in this how does that differ from what you guys did uh, in columbus with that strategy involved yeah it, it's it's uh, drastically different you know, because in Columbus, you're calling your own weight. So you're looking at what the next guy might pull of what he's potentially written down for the next lift. So you've got to stay ahead of that. And there's a lot of moving parts to that. Whereas this, you don't have to necessarily think as much. It's just go out and lift the weight and uh, move on to the next round and try to get through every lift as efficiently and easily as you can. Brian Clark will be up first. Here are your standings after two events. Matthias Kieliszkowski is your leader over four points over Martin's thesis, who has already qualified. If Kielich Koski hangs on to win this, he, Jerry Pritchett, and Machaj Belshock will all advance to the Arnold Classic in Columbus in March. Brian Clark is a guy who is up first with just one point in the overall standings. He needs to basically sweep these final three events. He has got to win this competition in order to get himself to the Arnold Classic for the first time in his career.
this is an event that tests the, the body's total strength. A lot of people say body power, but this isn't how fast you lift it, it's just getting it up. So this is, a, this is a total body strength lift. And typically, there a couple of uh, a couple of uh, points aside, it's really who's the strongest deadlifter. Yeah, that's. I think that's the thing that that um, you know, with strong man, you're not judged on how you actually lift the weight. It's just finishing the lift. So, you know, as opposed to power lifting, it, it, you get it. You get three white lights. This is simply just a down call. So you have to get it from point A to point B as easily as you can, and uh, it doesn't need to be pretty. It just needs to get done. Well, another beautiful part about this is that the uh, that the judge really doesn't participate in strongman, except just to have the, the put down signal. Yeah, that's it. I mean, you're, you're not looking at lights, and uh, it, it really is just lift the weight, get the down call, and move on. Brian Clark up first, the starting weight, 700 pounds. So they're allowed they to use uh, straps. They just want to get through without wasting too much energy. And this bar is much different than what we saw at the Arnold Classic last year with that elephant bar. Yes, there's and not a lot of give in this bar. It's a position. raw steel bar. has a deep all knurling. Got straps on. Wow. Easy. Easy. So no problem for Brian Easy. Clark as he is through 700 pounds. Remember, each athlete will lift this weight. As soon as you fail, you are done. Jerry Pritchett, it's his turn. That looks pretty easy. Uh, we're just starting out really kind of a warm up for most of these athletes. So if you've got a little bit of give in the middle of the bar, that allows for the uh, the, in, the the weights, the plates on the end to actually start to uh, give you a little bit of momentum to, to bring it up. This bar is pretty stiff. It's, a, it's six inches longer than a normal bar, but that's about it. Jerry Pritchett up next, 700 pounds on the bar. This is a man you've competed against quite a bit. Yeah, Jer Jerry's... Uh, very much known for his deadlift ability, so I'm sure that he's going to be looking to uh, try to win this event. He'll, he'll definitely need the points. And Pritchett makes that look light, and he is through. Yeah, with the with the setup like this, you know, the warm-up equipment in the back, a lot of people don't realize that the warm-up equipment in the back can be drastically different to coming on stage here. So a lot of these guys, their first lift, they're coming up, they're getting a feel of the platform, obviously getting a feel of the bar, and trying to gain that confidence with that first lift. Get that one done, you kind of you kind of let out that sigh of relief, and then you get dialed in for the next lifts. So we saw uh, we saw Yitza, uh, Yitza pull off his, uh, kick off his shoes, he's in sock feet. That's to decrease the uh, distance he has to pull the bar, and as a tall man, that's important. 100 pounds for Kramer. 725. Oh, Very easily As done. Before, Brian, I was just commenting about how deadlift is different uh, with straps a little bit with strong man. The, the approach is to put your feet out a little bit wider um, and also to have a little bit wider grip typically. Yeah, start cool. with your hips as opposed to your back. Well, that's exactly it. I mean, the straps, the straps are certainly a, uh, a game changer because Effectively, it takes the grip this out, the and it allows everybody to pull with a double overhand uh, placement, which means that you can set into the lift a little bit more, and like you said, then try try your best. A lot of guys, a lot of us are so strong to our hips uh, and our legs that starting the bar off the floor in that position, it, it will really help a lot. This is Martins. Good pull. I believe he pulled over 900 pounds last year at the Arnold on the Elephant Bar. So he made that 700 pounds look pretty uh, pretty easy. Rono Love next. Another man who has already locked up a spot in the Arnold Strongman Classic in Columbus this March. Yeah, yeah, Ron Ronald's a, a great deadlifter, actually. He's pulled, he pulled some very big weight, so I expect this to be pretty easy for him. Yeah, no problem for Heinle, as this 700-pound barbell is proving to be an informal warm-up for most of these men. Yes, I believe he placed third in the 2015 uh, World Deadlift Championships. Um, and, he's, and you can see those hip flexors popping out through his shorts. I mean, that's a, that's a sign of a big big puller. Yeah, Ronald uh, is a guy that... Um, for whatever reason, some guys still underestimate him a little bit uh, with these events, but I expect him to be right at the top uh, with this deadlift competition. Vachas well, Belshock up next. He's using his straps. He's getting strapped up. 
there, there are different styles of straps. Uh, there's the figure eight straps that, that have become popular for some. The shorter straps, thinner straps, longer straps. It's really the preference of the strongman. The further that distance is, the heavier the weight's going to feel to them. So you watch. They're dragging it straight up their legs. Bell shock is through. So, uh, so far, everyone's looked pretty good with 700 pounds. So again, just the uh, the socks, uh, just to decrease the, the, the how high you have to pull the bar up. If you can take a half inch or an inch from not having soles on your shoes, and uh, and and actually be able to uh, decrease the lift that you have to pull the bar, because that can be a big inch because you have to lock the bar out. The other one too is that personally, uh, I know a lot of big deadlifters say that if they the less they have on their feet. They can feel their feet pushed down on the floor as opposed to try to stand up with the bar. Yeah, I'm, uh, as a, with regard to the socks, I mean, it, it, again, it's personal preference. And, um, you know, for me, uh, here's Keelis Koski. That's good. I know, I know he's been working really hard on his deadlift, so I'm interested to see how he does uh, with this contest today. But finishing up that thought of him. Uh, yeah, this looks really simple. I remember last year in Columbus, he came off the floor, I think, after failing a lift, and you were right there talking to him. What did you say to him at that point? Mateus, is, uh, he, he has big expectations for himself. He's, he's uh, very competitive. He's young, um, and he, he tends to get down on himself. He's, he's really hard on himself. Uh, so it's more, you know, something for me as a veteran. I see how much potential he has. And, you know, sometimes a, a pat on the back from somebody like me and just saying, hey, buddy, you know, just keep your head up. It's coming, whatever. I'm, I'm actually, I really want him to come train with me uh, in Colorado. I'm, I'm trying to get him out for that. Uh, it's crazy with our schedules, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's just a pat on the back. That's really all it was um, at that point, you know, just saying keep your head up. You can see that kid has tons of potential. Uh, he's, uh, he's incredibly athletic. He's fast. He's strong. He's got... He's got all the tools, um, and it, it'll be exciting to see as, as he grows into his frame. It'll, it'll be really exciting. 765 pounds is now on the barbell, and Brian Clark is back up. This is his second lift. And still no problem for Brian Clark as he is through. And that'll give way to Jerry Pritchett. I think uh, I think Brian uh, kind of used the, uh, the let his shoulders drop a little bit, which is okay if you keep your lower back straight. And then you just have to stand and pull back some. Uh, some really big deadlifters have used that style in the past. Yeah. You can see here Jerry's got a, a flat shoe on. I'm, I'm the same way. I actually prefer pulling in a very, very thin shoe. Um, just always been a personal preference. And um, I could go in a lot more detail, but actually get more power out of it. 765 for Jerry Pritchett is no problem. He stays alive. So every man... Is still alive here in this last man standing event, the third of five events here. And and being six eight, Brian, that's a long way to pull. Yeah, it totally is. I mean, the height the height of uh, of some of these guys, you know, getting down to a nine inch deadlift bar is is quite a challenge. You know, it's it's uh, definitely a lot lower for guys like us when we're taller. Um, seems like almost a deficit pull at times. Absolutely. Look at him. He's, at he's down. Uh, just, he's really talking to himself. He's getting himself going. There we go. This is Yitz Kramer at 765. 765 for Kramer. And that was easy. Wow. Big pull. Very quick. That just shows that uh, a lot of these guys are way off from getting up to their, their maximum lift. We're going to see a big deadlift today. Yeah, that, that looked really, really comfortable for Kramer. And a 6'5", six, 6'5", five, six, five, uh, athlete, that's that's quite a lift. Yeah. I do know that, uh, what else can you I do know that uh, there's a lot of discussion about how fast you can pull a lighter weight to develop power for a bigger deadlift. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's funny, sometimes, uh, you know, you see guys, that looked really good for Martins there. Yeah, you see guys pull the lighter weights, and sometimes they're very, very fast, and then when they get to the bigger weights, 
they almost can't shift into that, uh, for lack of a better term, like four low gear and, and really grind through a heavier weight. They almost have to pull it faster. They don't pull it. And, you know, other other big deadlifters, they'll pull even the lighter weights a little bit slower, but they can just keep going as the bar gets heavier. They pull it the same exact way. Yes. And all the guys are out there helping each other. Wow, Look at the hip musculature on uh, Rauno. He's a very terrific deadlifter. And, you know, the, uh, the the idea that, Brian, you would like to have Kayla Skofsky come train with you, an active competitor, and these guys are over on the side talking to each other. Strong men really want each other to, to do their best. You only want to beat your competitor if he's at his best. Absolutely. I mean, that's that's true for me. I can say 100%. I don't, I don't want anybody hurt or banged up. I want everybody to bring their top A game, mm. and then we'll find out who the strongest is. And I, I really believe that, that if not all the guys, the majority of guys feel that exact same way. Yes. Here's Matos Belshock for his second lift, 765 pounds still on the barbell. He's going to roll it back in, keep it nice and close to his legs, and drag it on out. Get those hips down. Bring it down. Down. Good lift for Belshock. Belshock's been dealing with a little bit of a, uh, a hip issue, and I was talking to him uh, earlier about some of the training, and, and that's been affecting him a little bit with his training. And um, he's trying to figure out what's going on, and something like that can really hamper uh, your training, especially when you're talking about big weights. So. Yes. I know that um, that that would probably be easier for him. Uh, so he's he's been battling through that at least in training. So I would imagine so. Taylor Skoski up next. This is your overall leader right now. Yes, he's dominated the first two events, um, but but to be able to uh, have a solid showing in the deadlift would really lock him in towards the last two events. Give some support, Kayla at 765. I think he pulled a little more smoothly. I, I think one thing he did, he put his uh, he put his heels together a little bit and put it and pointed his toes out, kind of uh, giving some giving some quads off the off the bottom of the lift. Some guys do that. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot with uh, the, a lot of people think the deadlift is just picking the bar up, you know, and standing up with it. And there's so much little detail in this lift it's it's ridiculous i mean i'm i mean i know for me i i watch video weekly on myself trying to analyze what i could do just a little bit different you know how my feet are hips knee placement back so hip, you know just across the board so it's a very technical lift especially when you get up to the bigger weights there's not a lot of room for air okay so this is 815 pounds and Brian Clark's up, starting the next round, the third round. Getting strapped up. He changed his pulling style a little bit. He let his shoulders go a little lax. Looking down. He's going to stand up. Double clutching. Pulling back. Wow. Great little count for Brian Clark. As he stays alive and he is pumped up. He really, really wanted that lift. He really wanted to uh, watch, watch how he, he starts off. He gets it to his knees. And then he gets over the knees. And he keeps pulling back, back, back. He keeps pulling back. Locks out. And, Brian, that's a perfect example of what you were saying earlier. It just has to get from point A to B. It doesn't have to be pretty. He just needs to get there. That's it. He got he got the down call, and he, he uh, chalked that up on the scoreboard. So good for him. I'd like to know if that's a personal best. Seemed like from his reaction it might have been. Yeah. You know? That would be really cool if it was. It was. So Jerry Pritchett, who's a, uh, a scientist with the deadlift, I'm, he's got a lot of uh, things to say about the deadlift. But the powerlifting world record holder as well as the strongman world record holder in the past. Jerry Pritchett just mauls that weight. Very deliberate. Yeah, he's, he's a little different. He just had a straight pull. No hitching. Straight up. Feet out. He kept a little bit more of a flat upper back when he started the lift. Okay, so uh, Kramer had a great lift the last round. Came off the ground really, really smoothly and, and uh, very efficiently. Got his groove. I guess, uh, Brian, you know, 
the only way to learn how to lift a heavy weight is to lift a lot of heavy weights. Yeah, it, I'll tell you what, it's, it's easy, really easy with the lighter weights to keep really good form. But once you get up to a heavier bar weight, that's where you start to see your weaknesses and what you need to work on. Kramer, no problem as we have yet to have a man bow out here. All eight competitors still alive here in this third of five events. Man, Martins is like raw meat. Martins is right on the bar. He's almost pushing the other guy out of the way. He is focused. Yeah, he's, he's definitely ready to go. I, I know Martins has been working really hard on his deadlift too, so he's going to want to put up a, a big result here. Absolutely. Looking to get back. To the Arnold Classic for the second time in his career. He's already qualified. He was there in 2017 when he finished eighth and at 815 pounds. Wow. Lisi stays Very alive. Nice. You know, these uh, these Rogue barbells are really well made. I got a chance to talk to Bill Henniger, the owner of Rogue. Um, they, they work on tensile strength. They've given the athletes absolutely every chance to have the best result with these barbells that they put out. Yeah, there's a lot. Of, it's amazing, too. There's a lot that goes into a quality bar. Yes. And um, Rogue, Rogue does it better than anybody. They really do. Here's Ron O'Hyla at 815 pounds. An easy day for Ron O'Hyla. Wow. That's a very efficient pull. If we can go back to that and just watch him come off the ground. He keeps that bar, that, his weight is distributed right over the center of his foot, and he gets it to his knee in a really smooth fashion. But then once it gets to his knees, it's lights out. Yeah, he's, he's got a lot of power left in the tank there. Absolutely. There's Machaj Belshock, who struggled a little bit on his last lift. We'll see what he has left in the tank here for 815 pounds. He's trying to stay in this competition now in the third round. Everybody's looking really strong. Can't shake off for the next event. Bell shock. I hear him fired up. You know, part of part of dealing with pushing through an injury. Bell shock has himself set. So now 815 the pounds for the man from Slovenia. Oh, he's going to do a little barbell roll. It looks like. There he comes. There he comes. Oh. Bell shock would not get that one to go, so he will be the first man out here in the last man standing deadlift. Yes. So I, I have to say that that's, that's the first guy we've seen to have a rolling start on the deadlift. I know that a couple of other deadlifters like uh, Benedict Magnuson rolls the bar. Uh, Yoko Hola used to roll the bar. So uh, he really had, you know, you see his face there. He was really trying to get that bar up. Right there, just needed that next three inches to get it to his knees. And also, you notice how the other strong men are, you know, saying, hey, man, you did a great job today, giving him a pat on the back. So this is a very important lift for Matus Kaliskowski. He's dominated in the first two events, and this would separate him from some of the other athletes who haven't been able to lift this. And 816 pounds was the most that he lifted at the Arnold Classic last year. This is just one pound less than that. There we go. Killers Koski nails nice. the lift. Very nice. That was a very smooth lift. I think he I think he had a little more uh he's got a little more in the tank, but he definitely had to put another gear on that. What do you think, Brian? Yeah, that was that was a uh, really important lift for him in, in this contest because so many guys were successful there. He had to get on to the next round. We'll see what comes with the next weight. Like you said, I think he had to step it up a notch. But um, I think he's got a little bit more in the tank, so we'll see. So 855 pounds now, so they've gone up uh, by 40 pounds. So I guarantee he's won the first two events. He's used as a strategy. He's just... So it's another another piece of this. It's not. It's that you know what you know what weaknesses do you have? You have to eliminate your weaknesses, uh, Brian. For for me, I, I mean, I mean for all athletes that you know in a competition with multiple events, you've got to eliminate your weaknesses That's and be consistent. It. I mean, across, across the board, my my rule of thumb for myself is, I want to go to any contest and be able to place top three in any event. Whether it's for max or reps or, you know, you're lifting a log or a dumbbell, it doesn't matter, you know. And that's, if, if you can do that in the sport of strongman, you're going to do pretty well. Easier said than done, though. Yes. 
I remember uh, Magnus for Magnus was a master at winning and not placing first, but maybe one or two bits. Sure, because he's consistent across the board. So Jerry Pritchett is up next as Brian Clark has decided not to make a run at this. So Clark at 8.15, that'll be his best lift. And now Pritchett moves on to 8.55 as the field starts to fit a little. I think Jerry's getting stronger. That looked better than his last one. It's yeah, like he needs some weight on the bar to actually make <laughs> to make him get into his gears. That looked kind of easy, actually. Wow. I'd have to compare his pull to probably yours, Brian, and maybe uh, uh, maybe uh, Andy Bolton. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Jerry, Jerry's uh, definitely widened up his stance uh, quite a bit, and I think it suits him really well, obviously. He's, he's getting some great results. The one thing I will point out with this competition is that's already the fourth lift. And for some of the stronger deadlifters like Jerry, these aren't massive jumps in weight. So by the point we're over 900 pounds, you're talking five or six lifts. You know, that's uh, that's a lot of, of deadlifts. They would, for some of the stronger guys, they would probably rather have bigger jumps and get up to the bigger weight sooner. Yitz Kramer is up next. 855. 855 pounds. I'll have to say to this point, he's been the most explosive off the floor. He, re he really has. I've, uh, I haven't seen Kramer deadlift um, in a max deadlift event, so this will be interesting to see what he can pull. And there's Martins again. Just That was a great lift. Very explosive, very smooth lift out of Kramer. Great lift. Now Martins is up. And again, he virtually pushes the other athlete out of the way. He's really, really the going after it. Martins Needs this lift. There we go. Lisey's hits that. Wow. He looks better than the last lift. That was a terrific pull. Very smooth. I think he's finding that spot. Brian, would you yeah. comment on that? Yeah, I, I think that, uh, like you said, he's... This is a groove. I mean, when you get in your groove and you have a deadlift that gets a little bit out of line, it can look much worse. And then you add more weight, you hit your line right, and man, it feels great. So hopefully Martin's just found that line, and, and uh, the next weight will be the same way. So again, look at that musculature in the hips. Those hip flexors just bulging out as uh, Heinle gets down on the bar, straps up. Heinle finished first in the 2018 Arnold Classic Australia event, so he is on his way to Columbus, Ohio in March, and just rips that bar off the floor, no problem. So 855 looks light for Heinle. And that'll give way to Kilish Koski. And now we're in territory where he might start to struggle a little bit, but no problem for Heinle on this lift. Very smooth, very efficient to the knees, and just gets that up. He's got a great groove. Pushing his feet down to the floor as opposed to trying to stand up with the bar. And I know that it's hard to see that, but if you're deadlifting, that's a feel that you get. Absolutely. That, that, that was really comfortable for Heinle. He's definitely got so some weight left in the tank. Just informed us, Sean, it's not 855. It's actually 860. We're going with the heavier bar than the Olympic. But you know why? Because this bar has to be five pounds heavier. Because it has to be a strong... Kelly Skosky getting ready to lift here. As he's your overall leader through first the first two events, he won the fire truck pull and then the log press just looking really impressive in event number two and a solid performance so far for him in the deadlift is going to make another run of this thing. He's, he's got time. He's got time. He's going to reset. Just breaks it off the floor. Kelis Koski, who is the overall leader coming into this event, will bow out at 8.55. Okay, folks, so you heard it. Brian Shaw is going to have him come and, and help him with this lift. And it's training. Here we go. He's pulling. You know, he gave everything he had, though, in that in that attempt. Yeah, it's definitely not for a lack of effort. That's for sure. Uh, Kelis Koski is going to be down on himself. But, I mean, the exciting part with him is he's young. And the one, the one lift that I will say takes a long time to build up is a deadlift. I mean, it, it, there's there's guys that it could take them 10 years to build up to a world class deadlift strength. So he has nothing to be nothing to be disappointed about. I mean, if he uh, if he keeps moving up year by year, 
he's going to get to a crazy good spot. So, you know, that's uh, he's going to be disappointed with that just because I know him. Yes. But, uh, you know, he's, he's, his upside is big. You need to have a short memory as a strong man and move on to the next event. He's got two events to go. Oh, that's it. Yeah, absolutely. That's very, very true. 910 pounds on the barbell. Four men remain on a gorgeous day in Santa Monica, California. A packed house here at the historic Santa Monica Pier as Jerry Pritchett will be up first as we have moved past the 900 pound mark. Yeah, Jerry has actually deadlifted more than this weight uh, in a powerlifting contest with no straps. So he's definitely got this in him. Now we're kind of getting to the big craze, the big the big pulls at the end of the competition. That's it. Yeah, this is uh, the fifth pull. We're over 900 pounds. This will be great. That was very smooth, very smooth. And when I look at Pritchett as someone who doesn't know as much about this as you guys, it's hard for me to tell that they've added weight on the bar. He looks the same through every single lift. Yeah, that's smooth. That's, uh, that's very true. You know, kind of like what I said earlier with the bar speed, Jerry's the guy that'll pretty much pull the same pace even with some of the lighter weights. So it, it is, you're exactly right. It's tough to tell kind of what gear he's in and uh, how much he's got left because he'll pull the same way until he fails him off. So Kramer from uh, Kramer from Holland, uh, terrific, uh, terrific pull so far, very explosive. I think just with gas in the tank, I think uh, he and, uh, and Heinle have been uh, very impressive. But again, Pritchett just knows his stuff. Lissitz is determined. Kramer needs to basically win this event. He's got to win the entire competition to get into the Arnold Strongman Classic. And he's looking good so far in the last man standing deadlift with the four athletes remaining. And that will count for yes, Kramer, 9-10. Fantastic lift. He had to hitch it a little bit. He had to hitch it a little bit. Okay, here's a look at it. I'd say technically got a really good start. Kind of yanked on the bar a little bit. I think you probably want to be a little smoother. That might have actually put him out of position. Rock his shoulders forward just that, that tiny bit. Yeah. Okay, here's Lissis. Got a roll. Pulling. Ortiz Lisi's through 910 pounds as the big weights are really going up. Really, really solid. That's, he's approaching his uh, the weight that he was able to pull uh, last year at the Arnold uh, Classic. Okay, now watch this. He's got his feet a little closer together. Does that dynamic, pulling the bar to himself. Some guys like that because they feel it, it livens the bar. And I think uh, some of the other athletes might pump their hips a little bit, Brian, to give that same sensation. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's really a lot of uh, a lot of glute power uh, bringing the hips through. So once you get past your knees, you really, really want to flex there and drive your hips hard. But um, you know, this is it's unique because some guys will come off the floor really strong. Some guys will lock out really strong. Everybody's strong at a different point in a deadlift, so it's, it's trying to not have any weaknesses as a team. Yes. Nine ten for Ron O'Hanlon. And Ron O'Hanlon is through 910 pounds, and he will stay alive. Yes, and he's got Arnold right in front of him. Very nice. Arnold can Arnold, Arnold can see the big lifts are coming. Over 900 pounds. Okay, very smooth and efficient right off the floor gets it over his knees even slings it down making a statement 950 pounds is next okay you know in 2011 brian at the uh, two, uh 2011 at the twa uh world strongest man finals yep. i believe zadruna saviscus actually set the world's record with like 965 or something uh yeah it was nine 970 i believe 970 yeah so uh, it wasn't it wasn't in the rain. No, <laughs> yeah. it was in the rain. It wasn't in this beautiful weather. Yeah, that's for sure. It was in the rain, not this beautiful weather in Santa Monica. But but uh, honestly, uh, that just, this just shows where we are. Yeah, this is a. I mean, you're talking in less than ten years. We've we've evolved to where this is just a standard weight. This is. I mean, it's world class. These guys, four four guys lifting nine ten, on to nine fifty. I mean, this is uh, these these people are getting a show for sure. Absolutely. This is the next step towards 1,000 pounds at 950 pounds. Deadlift specialist. 
Jerry Pritchett. Let's just right let's just watch and see what kind of let's see what kind of uh, style he has on this one. If it looks like the other one's the same speed, and if I were a competitor, I'd be concerned if he just pulls it the same way. That means there's gas in the tank. You you would absolutely think that for sure. Nine fifty for Jerry Pritchett. Okay, it, that actually looked a little faster. He's getting a little serious. Um, very confident. Look, built that pressure in his feet, gets it up to his knees, and just stands up with it. That man knows how to deadlift. Yeah, that, that was a very, very solid lift from Jerry. That, that was awesome. Very good lift. So uh, this is kind of a scouting trip for you a little bit too, Brian. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we're, we're six six weeks out from the Arnold in Ohio, and, you know, I'm going to be competing against uh, a number of these guys there. So you could, you could say that. I mean, I, I'm kind of always scouting. I'm kind of always scouting. <laughs> but you're also talking about helping one of your competitors, this, you know, uh, Kalos Kossia, to get that deadlift going. Yeah, I had uh, I had J.F. Carone, who unfortunately had to pull out of the contest. I, I would have possibly picked him to win this deadlift event today um because he pulled a thousand pounds with you in training he did he did yeah we, we got together last year and that was incredible yeah so i really personally like training with the guys um i love bringing them into my gym and you know just the energy you know you have yeah so you know, two Lissus guys is that up. strong is is uh it's, it's something special yes this is up with the next weight with the so so uh, Kramer looks like he uh, dropped out. It was a really he had a lot of struggle with the last weight. So uh, Martins is up, and that'll leave just three men: Lisi's, Pritchett, and Ronald Heinla. Nine hundred and fifty pounds. This is a big, big lift, and I'm certain this is a uh, it's a personal best for Martins as well. Martins has uh, has done a lot of great things in strongman so far, but you know this will be a new mark for him a deadlift. Notice how folks are sl the guys are slowing it down a little bit. They're yeah, stalking. He's, he's not uh, not attacking the bar. He's got to get his energy right. He's got to get in the zone. You can see him amping up. You know, he's every, everybody kind of has that routine to get into that that amped up spot to lift these kind of weights. So, uh, Martins, you can tell this is a big weight for him because of the way he's getting amped up instead of just going up to the bar like he did before. Right. You want to drop all the inhibition that you have and, and, and get put yourself in, in, in overdrive. That's right. 950 pounds for Lisi's. Looking to stay alive and possibly win the event. He's giving everything he's got. Oh, oh they cannot get it wow. past his knees. So close. Great fight from Lisi's though so at 950 pounds, and that'll give way for Ron O'Heinla as now just two men remain as Pritchett and Heinla. That was a great effort. Now watch. Off the floor, gets it to his knees, crosses the knees. You know, does the lean back, but just couldn't get in position to hitch it back. He needed to he needed to pull it a couple more inches to get that hitch. If he could have got it a little bit further, I think he probably could have finished that. The other thing is he's, he's uh, wearing a knee sleeve, and it, it, sometimes with that bar, with the, the deep, sharp knurling, it can get caught up a little bit on, on okay. stuff like that. So. Well, this is a raw bar, and there and with you know with his foot placement, that knurling would get caught on that. Yeah, yeah. and that's so just that, enough. That could be a factor. I mean, you're talking Friction. 950 pounds. You know, you get caught up a little bit, you can't pull it. You know? Okay, Heinla's looked unbelievable so far. He's had great lifts. It's 950 pounds. And if Heinlein can't make this, Jerry Pritchett's your winner. Yeah, I think I think Heinlein's got this in him. If he if he gets it off the ground, I think he can finish it. Whoa. Okay. Well, he didn't he didn't get it off the ground. So they didn't get off the ground. That's a little surprising. <laughs> so Heinlein bows out, and Jerry Pritchett, no surprise there, as he will pick up his first event win of the competition as he lifts 900. 50 pounds. He picks. He picks up a lot of very, very valuable points, Brian, and, yeah, and uh, get himself uh, closer uh, to uh, the goal of qualifying for the for the overall uh, Arnold Classic. Yeah, Jer Jerry needed that for sure. Yeah. You know, with the overall standings, it's important to uh, important for him to perform in, in probably his best event. Yes. You know, so that, I'm sure he's going to feel great about that. So he, yes, he, he did what he needed to and what he expected. So I. I would say that that was the result that he that he was looking for. Yeah, so we're absolutely. here with uh, Brian Shaw, um, 
you know, there are there are uh, there are myths in the world, and then there are actual legends, breathing living legends, and definitely Brian Shaw is one of them. So I, pr- a, I appreciate as that. As a strongman fan and a, and somebody who's watched his career almost the whole time, I'd have to say that. Um, get a, somewhat of a front row seat to a lot of it. It's been fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, thank Brian, we really want to thank you for taking the time to stop by. It's a blast talking to you. Yeah, I'm Best sure, of guys. luck in Columbus. Can't wait to see you throw down there, and best of luck with the training moving forward. I really appreciate that, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. Jerry Pritchett is your event winner, 950 pounds. Two more events remain. The Rogue Sandbag Carry is up next at Pacific Park in Santa Monica. Let's call it in the crossfire. Let's call it in the crossfire.